and welcome to ET Auto and to this episode of Technology Talks. Well, this is the first episode where we have moved out of the studio or office to the real world here on a deserted stretch of road in Kochi. Well, this deserted stretch of road is also a test track of sorts for a set of cars running on autonomous driving technology. Autonomous driving, as we all know, is one of the key global mega trends. And this technology is being developed here in Kochi by a startup called Roche AI. Proof of the pudding is in the eating. So I got into one of the technology demonstration vehicles for a test drive. Well, I just sat on the driver's seat. The car drove on its own. We also witnessed how technology can enable a car to be remote controlled. A sign of things to come. What you see is uh, L3 level of autonomous driving technology at work, which in other words means that uh, in an L3 vehicle, I can drive, I can drive without my hands on the steering. And uh, part of the job is uh, thanks to the drive by wire technology, uh, which is uh, enabled uh, through four discrete robots here inside the vehicle, one each for the steering, one uh, for the transmission, uh, one for the brakes and one for the acceleration. And the rest in terms of cognition, in terms of uh, uh, detecting the environment, studying the environment and helping the vehicle uh, steer uh, itself uh, is the combination of uh, uh, ca cameras, uh, radars and uh, LiDAR. This Honda City was equipped with three LiDARs, five radars and six cameras. The hardware has to be coupled with robust software technology for the car to be able to drive itself efficiently. The computing power of this car, for example, is equivalent to six gaming computers working together, according to Roche AI. Uh, even with the uh, L3 autonomous uh, mode engaged, uh, I can take control of the vehicle if I wish to by overriding the uh, technology at work. And in the event of an emergency, there is always uh, uh, an emergency button which I need to just tap for the vehicle to stop immediately. And uh, these features are part of the overall uh, technology stack. Roche AI is two years old as a B2B startup, but its founders have been working on autonomous driving related technologies for over a decade. We caught up with them for a detailed discussion on the development and rollout of the technology for which the drive-by-wire robots form the fundamental building block. So that is the fundamental building block. All right. And above it, you have the software platforms, which which it makes it uh, which makes it drive by, uh, you know, where you can control it through a computer, and that that is where the autonomous vehicle computer comes in. Okay, that's when the vehicle becomes fully autonomous. Fully autonomous. Depending on what level correct. We are correct. About. So, so at this stage, let me bring in uh, Rajaram uh, Rajaram Murthy who is the co-founder and CTO of uh, this startup. Uh, Rajaram, explain yeah. to us the deep, deep technol uh, technical aspects of this uh, uh, yeah. uh, technology piece. Yeah, hi Sumandra. Okay. Sumandra, actually so, so Dr. Roshi said, right? So um, what we have built here is, uh, we just built the autonomy stack. Okay. So usually uh, uh, everybody in the industry right now knows about that. What does it mean by autonomy here? Autonomy means it has a two different functional components. One is the base layer, which is nothing but a drive by wire. The, all these the physical devices, right? Something like a steering or accelerator, brake and gear right now. When we are talking about the consumer, this kind of a commercial vehicle, these are the four components. But when we go for the other industries like mining or construction or forestry right now, apart from all of these four devices, there will be a lot of other devices. Uh, right uh, now, something like a loaders or are, something are like... Are those segments also your focus areas? Yes, yes. yes that, okay. that is also our focus areas actually. That's uh, what our current roadmap. Okay, uh, so but currently our complete focus is to make the autonomy stack Okay, in a, in a much more efficient and optimized manner with the use of existing sensors. Okay, our ultimate goal. So let me here, uh, I'll explain you this one. So as I already told you, there are two components. One is the drive-by-wire computer or drive-by-wire stack. The second one is the uh, AV stack. 
So the bottom portion, which will show you the complete AV stack, where you mm -hmm. can find the the um, i9 Xeon Xeon processor based computer, which has almost around 32 cores, which are running parallelly, and uh, it has a lot in, of in other. In simple terms, for the layperson, what does it translate into in terms of performance levels? You okay. know these uh, gaming machines, right? Mm -hmm. Let's let's imagine the fact that you have 10 high-end gaming machines stacked together, which is powered by a battery. That forms this one because we are collecting data from lots of sensors. Like you can see, like so lots of sensors fitted in this. Like this, this, this takes in uh, the the the. Uh, I mean, put to put it in as a perspective, you can actually the measure the the depth of the size of the nose of a person standing at 200 meters away. Okay. And that much of information is coming out from all these, uh, you know, 200 meters around 360s and you, it's 60 degrees, and you have so many of these sensors in there. How you many have, sensors would you have? Um, it depends upon the top quality, depends upon customer requirement, depends upon the customer's future products. But typically, it is like a high-end, uh, um, uh, you know, 200 meter uh, sensor. There will be three of them. Uh, this one has uh, five of those uh, 200 meter sensors and a high range. Uh, so high I can density. see a lidar. There are there are so many lidars yeah, in so, this. Uh, yeah. So how, how many? I mean, in in one uh, system. So when uh, you really wanted there? to bring in the autonomy stack, the minimal, um, the vehicle which can work in a conditional environment, right? In that specific scenario. What we are currently utilizing is, is a kind of a, um, the industry grade, the inertial measurement unit, the inertial navigation system. That's what we are currently utilizing it. Apart from that, there will be a lot of cameras will be assembled along with the GNSS systems. When you really wanted to run the vehicle in a very chaotic situation, right? So that kind of areas actually we will bring in the lidars and radars as well. Actually. Okay. okay. So, so here uh, the typical so car. for that kind of a application, no, uh, this system will have how many? No, numbers of let's say okay so i'll right tell you back. so in the front side actually there will be 360 degree one lidar will be there actually which is a kind of a long range radar a long range lidar which will which will provide you the capability of 250 meter range okay that's a one primary lidar will be there actually apart from that which there is will on be, top there uh, which, mm -hmm. which is on currently present placed on the top of the vehicle right now mm -hmm. and uh, apart from this specific primary lidar right there will be some kind of a secondary lidar lidar lidars also will be there most probably maximum of two to three will be utilizing it actually to uh, to to specifically um, um, uh, narrow down the problem to detecting the pedestrians or detecting the obstacles or detecting the lanes actually or detecting the traffic light signals right now so the secondary lidars will be completely focusing only on the environment Right, the primary lidar will help the vehicle to localize actually, localize and it will try to utilize and match the components along with the high definition maps what we already built right now. So the, th this is how the whole AV stack sensors are being uh, mounted Which in means the vehicle. A lot of the, the vehicle at any given point is reading a lot of data. data right? Yes, yes. yes, so yes. Uh, what would be the size? Uh, no? Okay, so I'll tell you. So per second, um, we usually get per second. It's going to be in the range of. Uh, Almost in the range of terabytes of information, actually. Okay. One hour of one, drive. Uh, yeah, uh, 140 to 150 terabytes of information will be getting it in a one hour timeline. 140 to 140 to 150 terabytes, terabytes of, of information. Like this, so this one, of everything yeah. is like pumping so much of data into the yeah. system, like rich information. Like when you when you take a camera, like when you in in a, in a, in a, uh, in a in, to, to tell you like when you video capture mm -hmm. anything, like the the one which we are doing right now. It is capturing the, the a 3D scene in a 2D format. When you when you reproduce it on a television or on a computer or on a phone, you are so you're seeing it as a two-dimensional format. But what we need, these sensors would actually take the depth information in a very rich way. And not in a not in not in one single frame, the the whole 360 degrees. That is like so much of data and so much of rich information. And you have to extract specific information. You have to tell that okay, this one means it's an auto rickshaw. This one means it's a cyclist. This one means it's a it's a it's a it's a like the, the Jugad kind of vehicles which you see in India, right? So these kinds of things is what we are um, we are focusing on. Like our motto is to make these things drive on a way drive on a road where the the whole thing is chaotic. Which is what I was coming to. Yeah. I mean developing. I mean see, uh, autonomous dri uh, driving has been a mega trend for years now. Correct. Work has been not happening in North America, many yes. uh, Europe and yes. uh, in Japan and many other countries. But developing in this same technology in a North American road. Yeah, would be much easier. Is it right now uh, from the algorithms perspective? Right now, see our ultimate goal is we all know that right these kind of sensors right which is cost around more than uh, um, more than almost uh, five hundred thousand dollars actually if you really wanted to get a sensor uh, set for one right. single vehicle right now. So our ultimate goal is uh, we wanted to utilize these sensors only, but still we wanted to come out with the optimized algorithms actually so that it can utilize the similar type of data 
and it can come out with a better result the efficient results with a lesser power and with a lesser uh, lesser cost. lesser cost sensors actually so that's what our ultimate goal so our complete focus specifically on optimizing the algorithms right now we have been working on artificial intelligence and deep learning from the deep learning specifically from the deep learning uh, when you talk about the obstacle or the environmental perception right mm. as part of the environmental perception our vehicle will have to make our vehicle to detect the pedestrian right so you 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 must be able to find lot of open sources available in the internet actually but still those uh, uh, sources right now if you are just take that sources and put it into the computer right now it will be running in 60 milliseconds per uh, means one frame to detect the person actually detect detect the one single very, person very slow, per very very slow it's going to be very very slow right now so our ultimate goal is to just we can take that sources as well actually because we no, don't no, require no, to don't reinvent I mean, the whole yeah. reel actually so we just took out the whole thing but what we did is actually we just brought in uh, the optimization in two different levels one is on the hardware perspective actually okay hardware perspective means we just brought in so that it can optimize it can it can it can it can provide the better performance and efficient execution in floating point levels actually that's a one optimization we already made and second thing is actually in the software perspective algorithm perspective right so um, if you really wanted to make the vehicle to understand the pedestrians or the different kinds of obstacles right now you need lot and lot of data right but uh, when compared to the current industry right now so there are a lot of algorithms like a one shot learning or zero shot learning or or or, or minimal shot learning so this is a different kinds of algorithms has already come out right so we started utilizing this kind of uh, the latest trends actually based on that based on which we are able to come out with the better algorithms which can provide you per frame we should be our algorithm should be able to find at least 1000 pedestrians actually 1000 pedestrians within 10 milliseconds that's what we achieved so far so still we are putting our more focus on optimizing the algorithm so right. that with a lesser cost of sensors means instead of using utilizing the lidars or radars right just with the cameras we should be able to make the because india i mean india. which i'm cost sure conscious. it will also yes. be one of our focus yes. markets no yeah. Is, yeah, yeah. is very cost cost yeah. conscious, cost conscious. Yeah. so uh, so you are saying that okay l4 even l5 is a possibility in india l4.5 we, we can try that out actually mm-hmm. we can try that, but it will take a longer time it will take See, longer time. It, it, but, it, but at a cost Uh, no, at a cost. Uh, See, the, these are, are two tier things. Tier ones also. Tier tier ones. You will be you are competing exactly. with your tier, tier ones. ones also, yeah, yeah. which will have the economy of scale and whatnot. Exactly. To, exactly. So, so I would, uh, I, would I would, I would, I would, I would uh, compare it to the Chandrayaan story, right? So the Chandrayaan, uh, the whole Chandrayaan project cost a uh, fraction of uh, the uh, high-end Hollywood movie. So I, that's such a such a you know motivational story for small startups like us. because when you have a requirement when you really want to solve such a problem you will come out with inventions which can actually solve it in a much better way when you have money you have the luxury you have the way to solve it in a different perspective what what we have it's an in, it's in india and I, and and it's for for me it's more of a social responsibility to bring in such a technology uh, you know uh, it, to a country like india where you can give more features to the customers and make the roads much more safer So this is what I I I I wish the you know the the yeah. whole story like I started this whole project of driverless things around like 13 years ago right. when I had a very bad incident of like uh, you know foreseeing an accident and and you know the, the whole thing started back then when I'm I'm known as the person who kick started India's driverless car revolution so is it's more like an ecosystem I'm going to support the ecosystem I'm going to help companies build their driverless driverless systems much more faster and much more quicker and in a much more Uh, i would use the word optimized way the uh, softwareization of the automobile grows mm-hmm. uh, the demand or, or the importance of india mm-hmm. as a development base will also increase absolutely uh, but at the same time there are also i get feedback about uh, talent crunch yes is that a challenge you are also facing and yeah. how so what, what we what we have is like i'm i'm building a pool of people who are, who who are into not in the conventional it or conventional uh, you know outsourcing kind of a tech I'm I'm building I'm I'm somebody who who always like to appreciate uh, you know patents inventions and empowering or or changing the nation onto an invention driven kind of a nation how many or, patents has uh, Roshan I I have 40 plus patents I stopped counting after I got started getting 20 plus patents but I'm empowering my team to file more patents so currently we have close 50 plus for schedule for filing for these kinds of inventions which we have and some of will be open for the manufacturers without any royalty just just use it for free and some of these uh, or sources which we are having will be open sourced i want the whole ecosystem to grow 
It's not like a monopoly which I'm trying to build. I want the whole ecosystem to grow and so that these features will get into consumers and we'll get much more safer roads in a much more faster pace than ever expected. And has uh, any any of your customers mm -hmm. you know, uh, started uh, the commercial production of the vehicles where you have uh, uh, no, it, so, uh, supplied your solutions? Uh, actually, uh, see, uh, we are, anyway, as I already told you, right, we have been working with some of the OEMs, right? So we have already delivered this kind of a drive-by-wire systems and we already delivered the AV algorithms as well. So what exactly they are doing is uh, they are about to get into the commercialization but before that they wanted to ensure that actually all their algorithms we already delivered our product they wanted to test their algorithms and features. their applications and features onto our product then only they should be able to move forward into the commercialization right most probably in another few more months right now so they should be able to get into the you'll, you'll be able to see products yes. in the market itself so. yes in india as well yes <laughs> that's good to hopefully know. right yeah hopefully <laughs> india as well yeah, yeah. thanks okay. Rajaram. thank you very much uh, thank you very much uh, Mandra. good to see uh, these developments taking shape here in, in kochi yeah. and uh, of course i mean an unconventional place i would say uh, yeah. for automotive technology to be uh, no you have to search for the needle in the haystack you know? right, right good good uh, so uh, wishing you and uh, your team all the best on behalf of team et auto so there you are uh, ladies and gentlemen uh, this uh, autonomous driving technology is being developed here in kochi and uh, as the uh, founder and the co-founder said that it's now reached a level of L3 or so, and maybe in the near future, even to L4 and perhaps eventually to L5. That's going to be an interesting time. Do stay tuned to ET Auto to get all the developments, to get all the uh, stories of such developments in the industry. Thank you for watching. Take care and goodbye. Thank you.